there is no point in letting fear of failure stop you. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Welcome to the Talk About the Magic podcast, where you'll find inspiration and encouragement tied together with the magic of Disney. Now, here's your host, Joseph Ballesteros. What is going on, Magic Chairs? Welcome to Talk About the Magic. This is episode number 137. It is Sunday. I hope you're having a great Sunday so far. Or whatever day you're listening to this, actually. I hope you're having a great day so far. But because it's Sunday, that means we have a guest today who is going to be sharing their own journey and how they're you know working toward accomplishing the goal that they have today's guest is shane from the hero protocol podcast uh shane had me on his show uh i guess last month no i think in december uh, <laughs> and um I, I was excited to have him on he has a great take on on his show where they kind of get really deep into not just marvel not just you know Disney, but all comics, all different kind of characters, Star Wars, um, you know everything in kind of that nerd nerdism dome. I can say that because I'm a nerd, so it's totally cool. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, it's gonna be it's one of those shows uh, that I think you when you listen to it just helps you feel a lot smarter when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, I mentioned to Shane, I don't, I haven't been able to read as many comics as I've wanted to. But hearing his show kind of helps me stay on the up and up to know what's going on. So that way I kind of stay in cool with uh, all my friends who are into to the same thing I'm into, which is, you know, of course, all the Marvel and DC kind of comics happening. So I'm excited to have him on the show. We're going to talk about, you know, how he started on his podcast, why he even is doing his podcast um, and all of those kind of good things. And so I want to make sure you guys listen, of course, to the full show. Uh, especially to the end because we give some Shane gives some amazing and great advice on uh, you know when it comes to completing and pursuing your own dream. So uh, be sure to check this show out. Before we get into it though, I do want to thank the sponsor, talkaboutthemagic.com slash shop, where you can go and find different apparel for, for men, women, and children. Um, different Disney apparel. You can find Disney mugs, Disney jewelry, like everything, everything. Right now we have a page set up strictly for Valentine's. So as soon as you go to talkaboutthemagic.com slash shop, you're going to find quite a bit of different um, Valentine gifts all regarding Disney, you know, for that Disney Valentine. As well as, of course, talkaboutthemagic.com slash Amazon Magic. That's my affiliate link. Anything you get from Amazon there will just help the show immensely. So Without further ado, let's get into our show with Shane. Hello, Shane. Welcome to Talk About the Magic. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm excited to have you on. I was I had the pleasure of being on your podcast, um, and so it was it was a, which was a lot of fun because we talked to Disney, and that's something I love to do. So yeah, I was really excited to get yeah, me you. too, me too. I was yeah, I was really excited to get you on. Um, to talk about your podcast and what you're doing. But before we get into all of that, let's go ahead and just let the Magic Cheers know a little more about who Shane is. Sure. Okay, so I am uh, Shane Mayo, also on Twitter and all those places as at Shane Mayo. Um, what I do is I do a, a podcast called The Hero Protocol. And uh, it's we try to do it once a week, but it's not always. And, and <laughs> Joe can attest to how difficult sometimes it can be to be consistent, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, what I like to do is I like to have a guest on, and we talk about things uh, specific to usually heroes and superheroes. Um, we try to stay within the, the realms of television, comic books, movies, and things like that. But heroes can be found sort of everywhere. So it's not uncommon for us to jump onto Star Wars and talk about heroic people in that universe or talk about Disney and talk about heroes there and things like that. Um, and of course, when we talk about anything um, Marvel Universe, of course, Disney comes up a lot because we talk about uh, the parent company and relationships and why these things should matter uh, if you're both a fan and uh, maybe just a casual viewer, right, or casual fan of of superheroes in general. So, yeah, what I, what I like about it because I, I, you know, I discovered the podcast um, when when you and I kind of connected on, on Twitter, and I started listening from there. And 
what I like about it is not only do you guys obviously, you know, whenever you have your guests and everything are talking about different things, whether it's Star Wars or um, I know like this past episode, you were talking more specifically regarding uh, The Rock and Shazam and Black Adam and stuff like that. But y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all know what you're talking about, and I love that. I love, I love, you know, informative style because I, I don't know everything about comics. Like, I don't know everything, but I love reading them. Growing up, I, I read them all the time. I don't know a lot about a lot of the characters that are out there, uh, but you guys definitely seem to have a handle on that, which makes me feel a lot smarter when it comes time to talking about this kind of stuff with friends and everything like that. Because <laughs> sure, I, sure. I just rely on what you guys have, have told me. So yeah, I, re- I really <laughs> enjoy it in that way as well. Um, but so what was your kind of your main motivation to start the Hero Protocol? Um, honestly, um, just uh, a, a little bit like yourself. I love talking. And, um, and, and when you find that you... Um, are passionate about something or even uh, really, really enjoy a subject, it's easy to sort of talk um, with fervor, you know, like really get into it and just be excited about it. And uh, what I wanted to do initially, like if you started listening way back, because I'm coming up on episode 60, which is a pretty big milestone, maybe not quite, I mean, like you're uh, quite a bit further than me, right? But, <laughs> but um, for a show that goes weekly, 60 is a pretty big yeah. period of time, right? Yeah. Um, and when I first started out, I didn't have guests at first, and I just sort of rambled a little bit incoherently. And uh, But I wanted to just sort of talk because I thought, well, if I'm thinking these things and I'm like, oh, what are they going to do with you – know, like if they do cast The Rock as Black Adam – oh my God, what story are they going to do? And if they do the story, like, you know, like, oh, like DC Universe, they, they seem to be kind of dropping the ball here. And, and oh, I hope they don't do that. And, yeah. oh, but, you know, like, and things like that. And I'm sort of just bringing up just the last sort of subjects that I talked about. But when I first started, I, I, I swore a lot more. <laughs> 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 because I wasn't, I, I wasn't really necessarily talking to anyone specific because I didn't have a guest, but I was talking just to everyone. And yeah. I wanted everyone to feel like, you know what? I, I want to be that guy that you can hang out with that loves the same things you do, and specifically comic books and heroes and movies. And I want to sit down and have a chat and just like, let's talk about these things. We like them. And you know what? There used to be a time, and this was kind of the sub-motivator, I guess, in a way. There used to be a time, uh, and it depends on the age of your audience that happens to be listening right at the moment, but um, there used to be a time when being a nerd was not okay. It was kind of frowned upon, and 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 nerds were picked on and beat up, and I mean, if you look back to the period of time that I'm talking about, a movie called Revenge of the Nerds <laughs> it comes to mind, right? So, yeah. which also is a little clue as to how old I am. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, now it's okay. In fact, arguably, this is the pinnacle time to be okay with loving these things and to not have to ever uh, be worried about who you're talking to. In fact, just today in my office where I work in my real life job, (laughs) I was talking about the fact that I got to come on this show with you because you asked to interview me about my show. And it just, it blew people away because they're like, really you you do that like and they were so amazed and impressed and i'm like yeah and i i guess never really thought about it in that way and i thought what it is it is really cool it's super cool that i can talk about this stuff and and other people may be as interested in it as i am right for sure no Uh, that's so true that i love that 100 percent. and that's i think that's what excited me too when i when i first started the podcast I was here by myself, doing it alone, talking to myself in a room, and that's what I basically do, you know, uh, for the other shows. But it, sure. I didn't, I didn't really get that joy that I get now until I started interviewing other people. Because all of a sudden, I realized I'm not the only one who likes this stuff. I'm not the only one who likes to talk. And and and, and you know, what's funny is, you know, people sometimes they'll say like obviously like this is not real right it's comics or it's disney i mean they're cartoons whatever but i'm like regardless whether it's it's a flesh or not 
it's more of the fact of the idea behind it, what they stand for, which to me, regardless of, you know, whatever medium that's going through, that is really what matters. The good, the, you know, the truth, the honesty, the, you know, the passion for, for achieving your goals or dreams. And so when I'm able yep. to talk to somebody else who understands the way I understand it like that, that that's what pumps me up. And every Sunday when the show comes out, that's why I love to share it because I'm talking to people who I know are, are with the same mentality and understand the way I understand it. So I yeah. hear you 100% about that. It, it is so cool to be able to share that with people and yep. uh, talk to each other. Yeah, exactly. So what is then, what is your process? You know, because there's a lot of people who, um, you know, love or maybe are thinking about doing their own podcast. Maybe they're struggling. Mm-hmm. But what is kind of your process to, to get that recording, to do the podcast? Sure, sure. You know, and when you when you kind of pose that question to me, it kind of gets me thinking in a, in a thousand different directions. And I guess the simplest way to to explain it is that I just ad lib mm-hmm. and it's it's that's not entirely true. Like, I want to be as honest as possible, but mm-hmm. it's uh, I want to just speak sort of in the moment. But my brain will go off in eight different tangents. Like even as I'm explaining this to you, I'm thinking, oh, I could sort of reference the fact that, you know, it, it's true what you said just a second ago about, you know, these things, whether flesh or not, could become real because you believe in the principle behind them. And I started thinking about Captain America and I'm like, <laughs> oh no, I gotta focus. Joe's talking to me. Gotta, <laughs> gotta stay on track. So to explain somewhat realistically my process is scattered and (laughs) ad-libbed but but in terms of like do you also mean from the technical side or just from the what is my thought that gets me to my recording well kind of both because you know when when people do the podcast like i i recently just did a a post about a blog post about this because Mm. uh, when you go searching on the internet how to do a podcast you get those technical things right you get the oh yeah get this kind of mic do it and while that's all important, that's all great, I yep. think people forget that there's so much more to do it, which is, even though it may seem the easiest, it's actually the hardest, which is, yeah, figuring out a topic yeah. to talk about, actually doing it, sitting down and actually recording it, you know? And mm-hmm. so I think a lot of people don't understand how much, like I said, even though on paper it seems easier because you're like not spending a ton of money, you don't have to know about equipment, it's actually hard because you have to actually do it. And, and unfortunately, the, one of the biggest, you know, the hardest foes to fight is actually yourself. So, yeah, yeah what is what is your process just in, in, in everything? So, you know, whether it's sure. technical or when you say, okay, I got a show this week, uh, what here's what I got to do to make sure I, I, I get it out. Sure. So I won't mention the technical at this point then because that to me is somewhat static. The fluid part is the thought to paper to paper production Uh right so when i'm thinking about what i want to talk about honestly a lot of it comes from things i will see online um that people tend to get really um envenomed about do you know what i mean like they just start to freak out and and i i love let me let me try to express this Mm -hmm. i enjoy um passionate people in terms of when they have a, like a, a fandom. Do you know what I mean? When yeah. like, Oh, I, I really like Marvel. I really like DC. I really like Disney. I like these types of movies, whatever. Yeah. Um, but on the opposite side of that immediately come out and I, I hesitate to call them trolls, but essentially trolls that come out and they, don't contribute they're just uh, uh, malicious and envenomed and they just for whatever reason and and this is the most baffling thing to me it's like okay so you're on a marvel forum and you came here to just talk trash about marvel (laughs) why are you on a marvel forum like shouldn't you be somewhere else i don't know if you've noticed this thing called the internet but there's a lot of it and there's a lot of things to be doing that are not involved sitting right here so go do that instead of being poopy here you know (laughs) what's funny is you could probably find a forum that just trashes marvel so like you can find your place that you want to be yeah i know what you're saying right so uh 
when I when I'm looking at all these things, I start scanning for basically the equivalent of of news, right? Like what's going on? Like so for episode sixty, I'm thinking, okay, well let's talk about uh, what's going on with. Uh, Jeff Johns, not he's the guy at DC, yeah. right? Jeff Johns, he's kind of controlling everything. He's decided that he wants to write comic books again, which from a, a fan's perspective, so like myself or anyone that's listening to my show, they might go, hey, what's going on? Like, why did he s- sort of step down? And I'm doing air quotes. He didn't step down. But, I mean, he's walking away from handling all of the DC Cinematic Universe stuff. Mm-hmm. So when he was in control – He was the equivalent of Marvel's Kevin Feige. And as you know, Marvel's cinematic stuff under the umbrella of Disney is sort of a unified – and there's there's a tone of – and I want to just say in general, like it gets more specific, but in general they are fun. They are fun yeah. movies. You can pop it in. You can put in the Avengers, which is arguably there are. If you have, say, an infant, right, like maybe yeah. anywhere between two and four year old, you wouldn't necessarily want them to see the Chitari because they could be scary, right? Yeah, exactly. But there's never a moment really where you should be m- more scared of the Chitari because the Hulk is your friend in that movie. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. if there's if there you have the monster on your side. So I'm thinking of it from like in terms of a family movie. Mm-hmm. My goodness, that is so much fun. You pop it in and honest to God, Joe, I am 42 years old. I have watched that movie 10 times. I have not in any way diminished my appreciation for it. <laughs> and I will probably watch it another 10 times easily. It's like popping in Star Wars. You watch that movie? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to oh, watch yeah. this movie. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it again and again and again. You know? So it's... it's. So I look for stuff like that. And I want to talk about the specifics. So why did Jeff Johns step down? Or why did they cast so-and-so for this movie? Or why didn't they, you know, like... Or speculative stuff. Like the other day, and, and you listened to the show, we talked about who would play opposite of... The Rock as Black Adam if they had to cast Shazam and my buddy Steve suggested Channing Tatum who (laughs) right yeah which he looks kind of beefy he's handsome so he could be and he and when he plays roles like if you think of other movies that he's been in like 21 Jump Street or, or whatever he can clearly be fun and goofy which would sort of be uh I guess an anchor for if you wanted a childlike person to be sort of suddenly thrust into the body of an all powerful God like being in the form of Shazam, it's theoretically possible. He could pull that off and probably make it enjoyable to watch. And if he's working off the rock, that would be a great movie. I'd, I'd pay money to see that. That is so true. Yeah, that is so true. Right. Yep. So that's my process. I want to get from, from, the ramblings of an incoherent madman at the beginning <laughs> to, to talking about why it would be really neat to see Channing Tatum in in the Shazam costume and and watch him play in, in the Rock movie, right? Or or in the Shazam movie, as whatever they're going to call it, right? Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm listening to you, especially when you're talking about uh, Avengers, that kind of – I've never heard of that angle and I love that angle because – that's that's hundred percent true. That's the way I see it, and that's the way I you know kind of explain it with my kids too, um, and and I, that's something that I, I've never actually heard as far as yeah, scary sure, but like you have to understand you got a scary guy too. You know you got a guy who's on your side, um, and he'll win. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and that definitely brings that definitely brings obviously some comfort. I mean, I, I'm, we're not we're not over here, guys, saying to if your kids are scared to see. I'm not saying you know go pop it in and. and and make them sit down and watch it. But it's just more of the idea of what, again, it goes to what does it mean? What is, because there is no actual Hulk. I mean, it's an actor, but what does Hulk stand for? And that, that to me is, that was a, that's a great, uh, you know, analogy in the way you, you're going about it and how you prepare. I mean, that, that's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, I, and that's why mm-hmm. I asked that question because, you know, like I said, people, they might be doing their own podcast, might be doing blog posts, might, whatever it is they're doing. But, they kind of I, I know we all get that you know get stuck in that beginning stages where you get the feeling of like what do I do how do I do it I kind of yeah. know what I feel but how do I get it out how do I mm-hmm. and you know what's what's funny is and I've heard this before and it's 
unfortunately, probably the best advice, even though it's really um, <laughs> very broad. But honestly, you just got to do it. And I like what you just said, yep. too. I mean, you're rambling. You know, what, what people might think is you're rambling or whatever you might feel is you're rambling in the end actually makes sense. Like it just yep. – it kind of just happens. But that's why you have to actually do it. Um, yeah. Because if not, then it, it don't it don't it don't never happen. Um, yep. So 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 being that you've been doing the show and sixty episodes is quite a bit, so that's awesome. What have maybe been some difficult things that you know that you've kind of encountered? Uh, I know I've oh, yeah. encountered my my share here. So go ahead and share yours. What what have been some things that maybe were a little more difficult than you had anticipated or had hoped for at least? Sure. So this is unfortunately, I, I don't like to go super negative, but I'm going to just tell it like it is, right? Yeah. So one of the things that I found that can be difficult is that I will get discouraged when I can't get my thoughts to line up to what I want to talk about, or if I can't get a guest sometimes, like if I get my, if I get really excited about, I want to talk to you know, so-and-so, or like, for example, um, I have a co-host pretty regularly, right? Mm -hmm. And if something happens where scheduling gets kind of messed up, I can, and I know I shouldn't, but I can sometimes take it personally. And I know I absolutely shouldn't because it's never, it's never, ever been about me, but I'm pretty self-centered and egotistical. So (laughs) of course it becomes about me, right? And then I have to get over myself and be like, okay, it's just, you know what? It's just a day. It's no big deal. Right. And then, but for that moment, I get super discouraged. In fact, there was a while where, um, not not any exaggeration, but there was also some technical things, and I'll circle back around to that, that were causing problems. But there were technical things and scheduling things and, you know, just topic things where, honest to goodness, there was a moment where I was just like, I'm done. I'm, not, I'm never going to do this again. Because there was, I felt like I was forcing it, and it mm-hmm. felt like such a, like a, such a tedious job to sit down in front of the computer and record. It's just like, ah, I could be playing video games or going for a run or, you know, whatever, something, watching Avengers, because that'll cheer me up, (laughs) right? (laughs) Any any of those things, right? And and then the technical side of it um, was, uh, as a Mac user, you're kind of blessed with all these tools that are already integrated. Like GarageBand is free. No problem. Away you go. All you need is a good mic. And honestly, the mic that's included, if you have a, like a MacBook, for example, is not it's not shabby, but it's not the greatest thing either. So, I mean, you want to get yourself a good mic and then you're meddling with levels and how do I get it to record properly into GarageBand? Yeah. And then you're trying to figure out, well, how do I make it so that when I have my guests and, and you know, we've recorded 59 shows so far and, and you, you and I are recording right now via Skype and it probably sounds great because we've sort of figured out some tools, but this is the end state of for me, 60 episodes of, I wouldn't say failure, but trial and error, right? That has got me to a point that the the tools are now, oh, this is exactly what I needed. Because for a while I was using another product and I'm not going to mention their name because they're very upsetting. But what they were doing was allowing you to, to talk in this way, like a VoIP protocol. So via computers and then they were saving all the data on their end on their servers now this was a free service but they were keeping your data Hmm. so when i went to like delete files or anything like that they stayed on their servers and i'm like hey whoa that's not okay that's my stuff i i realize that this is a free service but there was nothing in your terms of service that said that you were entitled to keep it and I have no idea what you're doing with it. And that makes me really mad. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, whoa, like, that's not yours. And, you know, that's why, like, permission about, like, hey, can I record this? You know, are you comfortable with being recorded? Things like that. That's why I'm like, when we set up, I do that. Right? Yeah. Unless it's someone that's on all the time, all the time, and they know what they're in for. Right? Right. Explain to new guests, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what's going to happen with this data when I'm done. And I'm going to crunch it this way. I'm going to put it on there. Um, fighting the technical side of things, 
oh, now that that's done, it seems like a non-issue. But for a while, it was a big issue, right? Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, I think you mentioned that you've experienced something kind of similar with crashing apps and whatever, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Nothing like that, though. That's extreme because – like you just said, I mean, that's that's your stuff. And the last thing you would want to do, especially if, let's say, you said, you know, I want to discontinue this. I don't want this to be a representation of myself anymore. And if they're using that for something else, I mean, that that would – that's that's intense. Like that's that's where I'm like, man, I'm like listening to you say that. I'm thinking like, okay, take some notes here. <laughs> Learn lessons. Yeah. Avoid <laughs> – you know, make sure you always make don't, sure you understand Don't everything. go here. Don't touch this <laughs> website. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, no. And, and yeah, and you're you're 100 percent right. I mean, there's things that happen, and unfortunately, you know what 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 bugs me because I I mean again, this is why I ask that because I know people are going to feel that because we all feel that way every time, especially when we're barely starting, we feel more like a failure than a success. And unfortunately, what we have to understand is we're already a success because we're actually doing it. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's exactly. not, it's not a failure. It's a trial and error. That's all it is. And and unfortunately for me, yeah, I, I had issues myself. And what for me, what what kind of made me feel bad was when when my you know recordings, because as you guys know, I'll record an episode and then it'll be completely gone. You know, I feel terrible. <laughs> I feel terrible about the guests. You know, because I mean, they just spent their hour with me, and to tell yeah. them afterwards, oh, nothing recorded. But I even uh, we'll just start again, right? Yeah, That's totally cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I feel I feel worse. <laughs> I feel worse yeah. because I feel like they think he doesn't know what he's doing. Now they've sure. never said that yeah. before, and they've been unbelievably gracious about you know this happening, and they have you mm-hmm. know all the guests ha- that this happened to. What's well, only been two, but still. Yeah. Excuse me. They they have it's two more than you ever wanted. To exactly, happen, right? exactly. But you yeah, know they understood. Absolutely. They were unbelievably polite about it. They came back on, but. At the same time, what's in, what's crazy to – actually, oh my gosh, I just realized three. Anyway, okay. So at the same time, <laughs> uh, what what really gets to me is like I said, that's how I feel. Like I'll, I'll put that shame on myself even though they're not – it'd be different if they got yeah. mad at me. It'd be different if they said, look, when you're ready to, to you know do this the right way, then call me. Like no, they're yeah. unbelievably gracious. But my I, I realized that it was, putting, it was me putting myself down saying, you don't even know what mm-hmm. you're doing. Like you just yeah. did all that for nothing, and and yeah, it took me some time to kind of step back and realize. Hold on, there's some things that you just cannot control, and yeah. you what you better be doing is preparing yourself should that happen. So obviously, if the guest said, you know what, I'd prefer not to come back on, you know, whatever, I have to come up with the show then, and I'm I'm prepared yeah. for that because I understand now that technology, no matter how reliable they say they are, it will never be 100 percent reliable. So. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just oh, yeah. Experiences, experiences, but I love that. Yeah, it's not failure; it's trial yeah. and error. Um, yeah. So, you know, what push? What helps you to push through all that? You know, whenever you get those feelings, or whenever something like that happens, what is it that helps you kind of, you know, kind of get back to your center to say, okay, focus. This is what I need to do. This is what I'm going to be doing. Huh. Well, I guess there's two parts of that. I think the first part is the little successes. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when when you record a show and you hit save and it works and you're like, oh, man. And and you realize that what you just talked about was gold, just pure gold. And you're like you, you're you riffing well with your partner, you know, like you're going back and forth and everything's magical and, and it works out really, really well. And you think, oh, I will never be able to ad lib that conversation again, but I've got it saved forever or until this media fails. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. And it's so, so perfect. And you think, oh, now I can share this. And even if no one listens to that podcast, you still got it. You still yeah. finished. Right? Yeah. And then, like, grander than that, in the bigger sense, the fact that I still get to do ultimately what I want. Like, it's my show to talk about heroes. And if I decide I want to talk about Star Wars that day, I'm talking about Star Wars. And if I want to talk about uh, why Jedi and Sith are the same, just different (laughs) in this this way, this way, this way, and this way, then I can do that. And if I find a guest that also wants to talk about that, they're going to love it, and they're going to go crazy, and we're going to have a good time. And that's what I look forward to. I mean, 
And now let's talk about this in specific, you and I talking, because we've had, this is our second actual, I'm doing air quotes, in-person conversation, (laughs) right? You came on my show once and there was an anticipation because when we finished up on my show, you're like, oh, you're coming on my show. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I am. I am absolutely (laughs) doing that. I'm going to do that because that's awesome. Getting invited so what an honor and privilege it's like absolutely let's do this i'm really excited you know it's it's good to it's that's the bigger carrot on the stick for for me you know what i mean it's like oh this is going to be so good and even when uh, you know sometimes like oh maybe this subject matter isn't going to be my expertise or maybe I couldn't find enough juicy nuggets on the internet to talk about or maybe there's just no news this week. Mm -hmm. It's still fun to talk about the subject in general and just let it be its own thing. It's so Sometimes it can be so organic that it just snakes off in whatever direction and off to the races you go. Do you know what I mean? Like, And it's just like, oh. Hey, what were we talking about three minutes ago? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. Let's keep doing this. This is fun. And then, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, yeah. And yeah, that goes back to the point of really enjoying what you're doing. That's what helps you to do it. I mean, when you don't actually care enough to do something, it'll, I mean, it'll become pretty obvious pretty quick because yeah, you'll get pretty fed up to say, you know, when you get that moment, when you say, should I do this or should I just quit and go play games or something? You know, you yep. you end up kind of going towards the games instead. So, yep. it, it, yeah, you're right. It does kind of it does help to kind of actually enjoy what you're doing, and that yep. way, no matter what, you're still having fun. So, what would you exactly. suggest then for somebody who's wanting to get into the world of podcasting? So, um, number one, and this is going to be what everyone says: do your research, mm-hmm. figure out what tools are going to work for you. Um, I use a Mac. Which means that, you know, I need Skype, I need call recorder, I need a good microphone, I need, and you know, and and all those things are going to be preferential to my setup, how I anticipate talking to guests, if I'm going to have guests, that's the technical side. Mm -hmm. After that, what are you going to talk about? And this one's sort of the soul searcher. What are you passionate about? Or if you're not passionate about anything, which I can't imagine is true for anyone, some everyone has got to have something that they absolutely love and could talk about to the end of days, right? Yep. Um, even if you think no one will care, what like I I love basket weaving. It's so good. I love the way the straw feels in my fingers. You know what? If that's your thing, do it. Someone out there also likes that and if you only have one viewer ever in your life but you're enjoying doing your podcast do it do it anyway because here's the thing and this is going to make me sound a little selfish maybe even a little little egotistical but being the host or creator of a of anything doesn't matter if it's a podcast a book a like short story uh Anything creative, ultimately, it is for you, not your audience. And that's a weird thing to say, because if you try to flip that on its ear and say, oh, I've never once in the history of J.K. Rowling's billions of dollars ever heard her say, I made Harry Potter for me. Well, in a way, if you think about it, she kind of did, because when she started, she was pretty hard luck. And it was her love of, of wanting to do this thing, despite every bad thing that came into her sort of experience to almost prevent it from getting made. She was doing it for her, for her peace of mind. And from that came this monstrous, successful Goliath thing that all of a sudden – you say Harry Potter and nearly everyone in the world knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It starts, it starts with that. Do it for yourself first. And if it's really good, people will also find you. Right. Yeah. I love that. I, I, 
it's something that I kind of say too. I, I change my mentality about it and I say the number one reason to be kind is to be selfish. And what I mean by that is obviously the the best way to make yourself feel better is seeing someone else smile. And that mm-hmm. and, and when it comes to that, be as selfish as you can be. Uh, to to make yourself feel better, make somebody else smile, and, and you'll see how much that you know makes your day better. So, now I agree with that one hundred percent. I mean, so the the core of it is about yourself and sharing mm-hmm. what you're doing, whatever creative thing you're doing, and and being able to share that with the world, whether it's one person or thousands of people. The way you feel and what you're trying to put out shouldn't change. You know, that should that should stay the same because, yeah, yeah. you know, that's what matters. That's what's making the difference. So no, I, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that 100%. I love that. And that's a great way, actually, to kind of get into our next segment because now we're going to be talking uh, about somebody or at least about the park that he created that, that really, <laughs> yeah. really helped uh, kind of change the way we perceive life and the world and all this other stuff. But it's time to get into our Disney Power Round. Right on. And now it's time for the Disney Power Round, where we talk favorite parks, tips, and tricks for your magical Disney trip. Let's bibbity bobbity do this. So, what is your favorite park and one thing that you love about it? Oh, I have to give you only one, hey? Only one. I, can, can I be general? Be like, I like <laughs> Disney World. Because it's really big. <laughs> no, specific. Well, you know, because I've been to both parks, and, and but okay, specifically, and I'll answer your question fairly instead of trying to ham out of it. Um, I think my favorite park is currently uh, Hollywood, and the reason being is because uh, it's got some of my favorite rides. I really dig the Aerosmith roller coaster, mm-hmm. and um, I like that the star Wars stuff goes on at least when I was there last, which was last year, I think January mm-hmm. star Wars every night, every night star Wars themed fireworks. My wife and I, even though we had like the park hopper passes and we we're kind of tired, be like, Oh, we're, we're not ready to call it a night. Let's go back to Hollywood and watch the fireworks and watch the show. It is worth it. Every, every time I'm, I'm looking forward to my next trip because I want to see what they've got planned. Mm -hmm. If I can add just one tiny caveat there, I miss the hat. Yes. Yes. I do. I I realize, I realize they needed the space for something new. Uh, And I've heard you talk about this before on your show where you're like, don't forget to go and just enjoy the this thing because if Disney decides to take it away, they're not giving give you a heads exactly, up. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's not. They're not be like, okay, Shane. By the way, this is the last weekend for the hat. Um, yep. You know, and we were lucky just the year before we managed to take a whole bunch of photos under it, and I'm so glad that we got that opportunity because when we went the following year, I'm like, uh, am I losing my mind? Are we in a different park? Like. Yep. What is going on? Like this is a massive structure suddenly gone. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it is so weird. It is so weird. You walk into there now. If you've if you've been there when the hat was there, um, yeah. and you haven't gone back since, it is a weird feeling. We, yeah, it was a it was a bummer for us because I I actually remember uh, going and having seen the hat. We have videotapes of when we went as a family when I was younger and seeing the hat there. So. You know, we went again as a family now with my own wife and my two kids. When we first went, the hat was there, and all of a sudden, the next year, it was gone, and it was yeah. just, it was weird. It was just, because it, you know, that's what I always talk about Disney. It's about making memories, and it feels weird because you realize that's a memory that, while it's there, it's it can never happen again. It's gone. The hat's gone. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah this is that's a weird, I agree, but no, yeah, yeah. No, it's, see, still, it's, still probably, it's still probably my favorite park, though. Like, yeah, we definitely go when uh, when we go to the Orlando side of things. We got to go to to that park. So for sure, yeah, no, it is. And with all these changes, and of course now the latest news of Star Wars Land now being uh, coming out in 2019, uh, they it's it's going to be a, a park. I think a lot of people are going to kind of keep going to for sure now. Yeah. Uh, so what would be That's... then your tip for the first time Disney goer? Oh, <sighs> well, that's tough. Because where's the first time Disney goer going? Are they going to Anaheim or are they going to Orlando? 
right? Because for me, having been lucky enough to go to both parks more than than once, um, the advice that I'd give to someone in Orlando is different than I'd give to someone in, in Anaheim. I'd say, you know what, Anaheim is just it's a, a rock and good time. It doesn't really matter what you do. You're going to have a good time, especially since it's your first visit. There's going to be a level of overload that even the, the best or worst planned trip, there's going to be so much to see, to do, to eat that you're literally, it's going to feel like it blows past you before you realize that you're done and you've got to go home. And you're like, what just happened? Where did my wallet go? Like, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're you're going to enjoy yourself unless, unfortunately, some sometimes people have, have a bad experience. I, and with that, I think it's because, you know, weather or something else bad happens or whatever. But yeah. honestly, first time, first time goer, just soak it in. Soak it in. There's literally everything every aspect and even once you've gone to the park a few times you you realize holy moly like the brickwork on the ground in adventureland <laughs> means something yeah there's hidden mickeys like th- you're not going to see that stuff necessarily on your first visit but on your third visit you mean like wow wow <laughs> wow like Someone put real thought into this. Like, what what were you thinking? And this, I, I have to just, it blows my mind away when I think about a group of Imagineers sitting in a back lot office somewhere going, all right, so we're going to build this ride. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, it's going to do this? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so what else? Well, what do you mean? Well, what about the plants? Yeah. Okay, well, let's do this. Okay, what about the fact that you're going to walk through a line? Okay, so... We want them to see this, and we want them to see this. We want them to hear this music. It's just, there's so much. And it it almost becomes daunting when you think about it. You're like, could you imagine sitting down to design the Haunted Mansion? Like, just in general. How much genius went into it. And you you blaze in and out of there in, in, well... Blaze is the wrong word because you're not going to blaze in and out of there. But I mean, like, truth truth to tell, if you were the only person in line, you're walking through the line, you're jumping on the ride, you're through the ride. Let's assume you make every single thing 15 minutes. You're in and out and done. It's never going to happen that way. But pretend for a moment there's no one else in the park. That's still... 15 minutes where people thought about every single moment of your encounter on that ride from the moment, like even before you pass through the first gate to get in line. Someone thought about every part of that experience, the grounds, the headstones, the way certain things, you know, are illuminated, everything. It's fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. One of the favorite things I don't I mean if you've never heard the story of Disneyland um I recommend you guys to you can pretty much read about it in any autobiography of, of uh or any biography I'm sorry of Walt Disney um there was so much that went wrong on that day there was so much work that was put in to the park and and so much like I said that went wrong in the in the actual opening day it just makes you appreciate all the work that was put in. I mean, this there was like at the time there was a strike, uh, a plumbing strike. So the day of they had to figure out. Okay, so they finally figured out the strike. What do we do? Do we get the waters on the water fountains on, or we get the the restrooms working? And Walt said, "Get the right. restrooms working. They can they can buy soda, but they can't <laughs> they can't be on the streets." That is so <laughs> true. Like I mean, yeah. But I'm like, it's funny because you're right. There was so much put into it, and so. If you I mean, if you never heard the story of it, go and like I said, read the, the book about it because it'll just make you appreciate what is actually happening here, um, yeah. and and it's 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 really awesome to see how somebody's dream, how somebody was so passionate about the dream that they did not let it get affected by the means of the world. Like there are so many yeah. 
things that try to come in your way. There's so many things that try to, to break break things, uh, break your dream up, whether it's real life situations or other people's criticisms. But he, he didn't let any of that happen. And, and he focused on what he was doing. And we got to now, of course, see a flourishing Disneyland, um, Disney World, and of course, all the other Disneylands and worlds that are around the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's so true. I love that. So, well, I don't know. Yeah. That that kind of fits into the second one too, though. But do you have another tip then for somebody going multiple times to Disney? Because I think what you said was actually really good um, to to you know kind of appreciate what's there. But mm-hmm. yeah, what what maybe in, what would be another one maybe then for a tip that for someone for somebody going, going times? Uh, yeah, a lot of times. Well. Uh, tip number two is is I guess to, for if you go multiple times, um, just take it easy. Go and, and, and enjoy yourself. I mean, think about it from top to bottom. You're going for a vacation. You're going to enjoy Disney, right? And it's kind of weird. And I say this maybe from a spoiled point of view, and I or entitled. And I don't mean to sound that way, but you're you're spending a a, a small pile of dough. And you're going to a park, a theme park, to have a good time. So appreciate that. Go. I mean, like, like it's kind of funny. And I, I, this does happen to me. I absolutely will see things that make me angry, whether it's people being rude to one another or, uh, you know, just disrespectful attitudes or, you know, if something – and forbid goes wrong with like a food order or whatever and you know as as kind of a, a hot-blooded individual that kind of thing will set me off and i have to check myself and i have to think why am i here uh, am i here to be angry at this person that probably had no intention of upsetting me or who doesn't even realize that i'm observing them do you know what I mean? Like if it's yeah. something that like if if I see like a, um, a mom or a dad scolding a child and I think, well, it's none of my business, but they shouldn't be yelling or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, go to appreciate everything. Just go to appreciate smiling people, happy people. By and large, you walk through the gates. It doesn't matter which park you walk through the gates of a Disney park you will see laughing people, smiling people, happy people, crying children, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> that's because, you know, they're not getting their favorite flavor of pretzel or, or ice cream bar or whatever. And, you know, once you get them that thing, they're happy. Just there's so much happiness. It's so – and if you're thinking about it the right way, it can be super intoxicating. You'd be like, can you believe I'm here? I am so grateful to be here that I can do this, that I can see all these other people who are enjoying themselves, that are happy to be here. And from like a less sort of metaphysical point of view, if you're going to the park multiple times, think about taking advantage, especially Orlando, think about taking advantage of that transit. Let me tell you something. The city that I live in is is Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So it's a it's a major city, and we have a population of about two million people. So not quite as big as where I think you live, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was like San Antonio, Texas. It's it's a pretty big place. Yeah, but two million people. We should, by and large, have a pretty respectable transit system. Yeah, Disney World does it better. <laughs> so <laughs> that is so true. By a lot. That is so <laughs> right? true. That is so true. Yeah. Take advantage of that. It's it like if you're staying on the resort, take advantage of that. Don't drive a car. Like honestly, cars and this is a North American thing and I I absolutely understand why we love our cars, but don't take one. Seriously, yeah. leave it behind unless it's just logistically impossible. Enjoy tra- being transported around by professionals that are happy to help you, happy to get you where you want to go. And we'll give you a moment's respite. Like you can just chill out on the bus for 15 minutes. Be like, oh, I'm going back to the hotel or I'm going to Hollywood or Magic Kingdom or I'm going to Animal Kingdom and I'm going to have a great time. And I get – I think the longest ride might have been because of where we situated our hotel to where Animal Kingdom was. That one time it was like 30 minutes because of bad traffic. 
But that's not horrible. And I'm not looking for parking. I'm not paying for parking entrance or whatever. If there's a fee for that, again, it's one of those things. Don't waste money, right? Like if you don't have to drive, don't just take the free transit. Go enjoy that. I could not agree with you more. I personally love the transit. I think, you know, a lot of people feel like, no, no, I don't want to have to wait for the bus. And And you know what? That is true. It is not fun when you get stuck and and you're waiting for 30 minutes on a bus but at the same time it kind of is you know it's 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 nice to to stand there and talk and realize what you've just been able to experience but i personally love um the transportation sitting in the bus i just it's cold you look up and you see all of the signs and posters of whether yeah. it's abc shows or broadway shows you hear the music mm-hmm. playing in the background they have soft music playing in the background uh, and it's just, yeah. I agree. So we took a car uh, our first year mm-hmm. because that's what some some family had told us. And we personally just did not like it. Besides the fact of having to deal with probably the most rudest people that I've had to deal with in my entire life. Like not even just. Oh, no. Ever. Yeah. It, the car rental people um, were just the worst. It was shocking. Um and, yeah, because they're that they're, they're not Disney, right? Yeah, they're, they're not they're Disney. Their own, no, 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 they're the, not. Disney. No matter what company they exactly. are, they're, they're, they don't care. Exactly. That you've come to Orlando, exactly. Right? Yeah, like, and it's funny because we we did that, and, and it was actually not as fun, you know, having to find the parking, driving, of course, because you know sometimes in the park you'll get out late, so you'll get you know get out of the park maybe midnight, one in the morning, or if not, you have to leave early so you don't have to drive that late. But yeah, you're driving back to the resort. It's so much better with the buses, at least to me. Depending who you yeah. are, I'm sure. But you know, at the same time, too, that Disney is really upping their game with with the buses. Now every single resort gets a bus. Before it was like if you were at Pop, you know, you wouldn't be able to. You know, it was All Star Pop and I think another one that were all together. But now each resort has its own bus to each park. So. I, I yeah I agree with that. Relax. Yeah. It seems so it. convenient and fast. You just like it seems like you get on on the bus that you need and you're there. You know what I mean? Like 10 minutes later, it's just done. You know? Exactly. Yep. 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 Yeah. And, and you can now go from Disney Springs to the park. I guess it's, it's awesome. I, I personally oh, just yeah. really like it. So yeah. before we, you know, before we sign off here, I do want to give you uh, the time, of course, to, to let everybody know about your podcast and where they can find more about you. So just go ahead and let everybody know about, you know, everything that you want them to know about Shane. <laughs> sure. So um, I'm on Twitter at Shane Mile. My podcast is on Twitter at The Hero Protocol on all one word. Um, we've got a Facebook page, which is The Hero Protocol. Uh, we're on Podbean. So the website is hosted there and, and then uh, shared on iTunes. So it doesn't matter where you want to subscribe. Just look for The Hero Protocol. Um, you can Google search it. You can go directly to Podbean and search for The Hero Protocol. Or you can go to iTunes and subscribe there, The Hero Protocol. Real easy to find. Um, protocol is, you know, pro and then toe call. <laughs> Super easy. <laughs> I'm not going to spell for the recording just in case I get it wrong and then it's recorded forever. It's like, ah, oh, that Shane's kind of an idiot. <laughs> uh, it's pro call. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, if you're if you're interested in my show or interested in listening to things about superheroes or Star Wars or occasionally Disney stuff or uh, and again, not just Marvel, but DC as well and other independents like I talk about other things as well. If that's your kind of thing, come on by. Uh, check out the show. You know, uh, it's free. <laughs> no obligation. No salesperson will call. You'll, <laughs> you know, you can just come on by and enjoy it. And and uh, yeah, go ahead, follow, like, subscribe, share. Uh, if you want to reach out to me on Twitter? Yeah, please do. Um, I, I like interacting with people that that tweet at me. Um, luckily, I, I've not had any bad online experiences so so far I'm, I'm pretty blessed i guess that way where it's like oh hey man i really like your show thank you thank you very much you know so yeah that's awesome. how you get to me awesome and of course yeah. guys i'll have that all in the show notes as well 
easy to, you know, wherever you're listening to this, you'll see it there highlighted. You can just click it. It'll take you straight there. Um, but Shane, I want to thank you for coming on. I really had a blast. I love talking to you. I love being able to just get into all the Disney nerdism and all of the comics and everything else like that. It, it, it's great to be able to talk to you about that. Um, but you know, every, with every guest, I always ask this question at the end. So I'm going to ask it to yeah. you. If you could yeah. just leave some some parting words of advice um, or encouragement, wisdom, whatever it is you want to share with listeners. Um, maybe they're thinking about podcasting or maybe they're thinking about something completely different, but they really just want to – Maybe they're just on that fence of starting to kind of go toward their goal. But if you could just share some advice that, that you would give them. The first thing that popped into my head was that Shia LaBeouf thing. Do it. Do it. <laughs> just do it. I, honestly, just do it. Um, there, There is no point – in letting fear of failure stop you at all. Um, and, and, you know, you've said something along the lines of your excuses may be valid. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, but I would also say don't let those be the reason you don't do something. Yeah. Um, as an example, we didn't really get into this too much, but uh, part of the thing that we started talking about, uh, I think back way back on my show, was the, the run Disney stuff, which is why I go to the parks as often as I do. And when I got into running, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do run Disney, and away I go, right? Like it's mm -hmm. you, you start, you lead up to it, and you start this thing. And when I was in my twenties, and I was doing little bits of bodybuilding i thought oh i'm i'm never gonna run running this is dumb that's i'm never that is the stupidest thing if i need to go more than 10 feet i'm taking the car you know what i mean like <laughs> that's it like it's just i, I uh, that was my mindset and then uh, i met my wife i got married and she got into running and i still was not not at all and she got into further and further distances until finally she became a half marathoner then a marathoner, then an ultra marathoner. Wow. And all these distances continue to, to rack up. And my wife continues to be, in a way, uh, kind of like a girl for me to someone to aspire to in terms of distance running and things like that. But even that aside, my wife is a fully able bodied person. In Edmonton, here where I live, we do run events where there's like a, a half marathon or a marathon. What was truly the most inspiring thing to me was this gentleman who is, I would say, 98% paraplegic. Okay. So almost no mobility in his body at all. He has, and I'm, and I'm, I may sound disrespectful, and I don't mean to be. I am this this individual, this gentleman is inspiring to me. His hands are uh, tight to his chest and almost crumpled in. If you can imagine what it might be like to be a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex with your hands kind of tucked in like that, mm -hmm. stuck like that. And I, I don't think he can move them. And he can't even turn his head side to side. When he does his marathon, he does it by kicking backward with his left foot. That's the only thing that seems to motivate him wow. backwards. And he sits on a wheelchair and will do a marathon backwards. If he can do that, you can do anything. You, you, you really take advantage of every gift that you have, every opportunity you have. Never let doubt or fear hold you back from doing anything because you should be able to do everything go out try it do it be proud of that accomplishment get done that's wow. it I, that's got to be it that's incredible that's yeah that, that's amazing yeah, and that's that is pure inspiration there's so many people out there who and, and like you said it's never to be disrespectful but they literally have it worse than what it is you're experiencing. And I know it seems like the end of the world to you, but for some people it truly is on the verge of being the end of the world. And yet they still yeah. are, are, you know, Persevere. fighting. Yeah, they're Overcome. still, exactly. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, that, man, that's that's incredible. And yeah, we did. You're right. We did not get into that. We're gonna have to get you and your wife back on uh, to talk yeah, about yeah. that run. That's that's so true. I, I, we did not get into that. And I, I want to do. I do want to talk about that because that's that's something that I've been interested in as well. Because I just I, I'm blown away when I see people putting up, you know, their their you know the medals that they get. It's yeah, so cool. But. Yeah, I, I love that, Shane. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, this is a perfect way to end the show. And hopefully you guys, yeah. you know, the Magic Shears who are listening, you guys can take a lot from this and, uh, you know, apply it to your life in that way too. So uh, thank you so much for coming on, uh, Shane. I really look forward to having you on again in the future. And yeah. I, I really had I really had a good time talking with you today. Yeah, me too, man. Hey, listen, uh, make me a deal. I'm going to come on your show again, but you got to come on my show again. And I want to do... <laughs> your favorite movies of 2016 let's do it yeah for sure you want to do that for sure you want to do that okay cool. we heard it we heard right it here on. guys you heard it here we're gonna do this <laughs> all right thank you so much awesome, man. all right yeah thank you so something that really struck me with what shane was saying was how you know he was inspired by this one individual and you know i i kind of was thinking to myself how many people do we have in our lives that are like that now i'm not saying necessarily physically you know that we have someone who who may be, you know, in a different situation than you are, but I mean that are pursuing their dream and goal through whatever crisis they're going through. I mean, you know, it's, I, I never want to belittle someone's problem or situation on the show. But at the same time, I always want to make sure that everybody knows that as big as your problem is to you, in the grand scheme of things, if you really want to get serious and compare problems with other people, you may not have it as bad as you may possibly think. But I know that there's issues all over the world happening. I know there's, in your personal life, maybe there's issues with, uh, you know, family, um, you know, divorce, uh, you know, anger, um, you know, just whatever different thing that might be in your life right now that seems like it's something you can't overcome it's important to understand that you can, not just because you personally have, you know, the, the power to do it, but also because other people have. And that's the proof. That's that's what you can rely on. And you can understand that, you know what, if they did it, so can I. Their situation may have been better than yours. Their situation may have been worse. But regardless, they were able to pursue, you know, continue on and to to persevere when when these you know trials were coming up and that's why it's important for you to find someone in your life that you can kind of relate to and understand that look everybody has problems so you know i've mentioned my dad on here before and and, and to me that's because it's somebody that i look up to in the sense of he had so many obstacles when he came you know from from you know where from the country of colombia here in america and he could have decided to quit. He could have decided to go back, but he didn't. And I look at me, you know, I was born here. I, you know, was taught English from the very beginning. Didn't have to worry or deal with kind of, you know, having to learn a whole new language in that sense. You know, I had a, a good house that I was living in because of the work that him and my mother put in, but he didn't. And so it's easy for me to kind of take advantage of these things and think, doesn't everybody have this or you know, didn't didn't everybody have the same situation that I had? And, and that's just not the case. Looking at my own personal family, that's not the case. You know, my dad had it much more difficult than I did. Even when he was in the other country, his father was different than obviously the, my dad was to me. And so, you know, when I hear and understand these things, that's what really makes me appreciate the fact that, okay, even though this seems big, you know, thank God I don't have the situation that my dad had because I don't know if I would have been able to go through with it. So if my dad could do this, I know I can do this. And that's what I mean. Find somebody, even if it's if not immediate family. That's why we have this podcast. That's why I'm bringing you these people every single week. Because you can relate to some of these. You know, the, the, the people we have on the show, they're normal people. You know what I mean? Like you and I. They're not multi-million dollar celebrities. They're not, you know, they're people who started off in a basement and now run their own business. They're people who started off in a in a you know, f 10 by 10 small room. I mean, listen to Lou's story, listen to Main Street Press, uh, listen to Corinne. Corinne's not even from, from America, she's from another country, and she's working at the publication that she always read and she wanted to be a part of. She's a part of Inside the Magic now. 
That's why I bring these people on. I want you guys to listen to these shows, relate to somebody and say, these people are in the situation kind of that I'm in or that I feel like, you know, I'm in. I can go through with this because they did. No, you know, it's never about being easy. It's just about being certain it's going to happen. It's going to work. It's going to be okay. And and that's what I, that's why I love bringing these guests on. And I really hope you guys are getting the value and inspiration that that they're sharing. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any kind of, you know, if you want to vent or you want to, you know, just, you know, ask whatever, don't hesitate. You can reach out to me on the email, of course. You, you can do that all the time. I, I never hesitate to respond back or, or any of the social media. And I know Shane wouldn't mind either. You can hit up Shane, look in the show notes. You'll see the information there for, for Shane. And, um, you know, let, and if you have questions, talk to him, talk to, talk to him and talk to me either way. I know we'll be happy to, to talk with you. So I really hope guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Uh, be sure to check out tomorrow's episode. It's Monday. Whoop, whoop. We're going to have another great show. And uh, hopefully by, by Monday, I won't sound like I have basically a stuff. No, still, cause I don't really think I do. I just, I just sound like it. All right, but anyway, have a great night, day, week, whenever you're listening to this, and as always, stay magical. This was the Talk About the Magic podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to rate, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for listening, and as always, stay magical.